welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's little project is a requested one. A little while ago, probably about a month ago, a few of you requested a little pin cushion that was a little sewing machine. And since that idea came in, it's been running around in my head and uh, I have been working on a design. Now I have to say, with this one, there were a few flying little sewing machines during that design process. But hey, I got there in the end and I wanted to bring you a really perfect little pattern and I think we've got there. And it's a lot easier than it looks. Trust me, you'll have to trust me, it's really not hard. So you will need a great pattern and I have one of those for you and it's free and all you need to do is click on that link in the description below. Make sure that you print your pattern templates out, set your printer to the printed actual size those templates will be absolutely spot on. So let's get busy sewing our sewing machine. Okay, so let's get started on everything we need to make our lovely little sewing machine. So the first thing we're going to need is the base is actually made from foam. I actually make it from one of these little kitchen scrubber scourers, it's just foam. And we leave this little base on. I've used these before in projects. If you don't have exactly the right size, you're, in different parts of the world, of course, they're going to be different sizes, but the size that you need to cut is 11.5 centimetres by 7 centimetres. And the, the mine is an inch thick. So um, if, you, if you don't have a sponge that, can't find a sponge that suits this project, just a piece of foam will work just as well. So those are your measurements, and they'll be in your... Uh, description as well so you'll be able to find those measurements and I just find that's the best way to create a base okay and also for our base we're going to need you'll have a template that tells you to cut this little one and that's to go on the bottom so we've got a nice solid base and I actually cut that one just a tiny bit smaller than the other piece that we cut which is also a base piece this piece is cut out of interfaced felt and um, I cut this one a little bit smaller. They're the same pattern piece, but just take that cardboard down a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so we've got our base sorted, and then we've got our cover for our little sponge. And that is cut from interfaced felt with our little corners out. And then, of course, we have a little base plate that will go on there. And we have our little needle plate there. And they are both uh, backed in heat and bond and of course we have our little sewing machine itself um, and that pattern piece might look a little odd and you might think that's not going to work you would just have to leave the angles to me and trust me that it does so these are interfaced felt also and I think the black is the most striking and it's certainly it's, it's very recognizable as an antique sort of machine um, and it really just comes together so beautifully. Now we also need a couple of things for the little spool. I wanted to make this accessible and easy for you. So for the little spool there, I've just used a little push pin. So you can get them everywhere and you get them all sorts of colors, but it's a perfect sort of size and it indicates a little spool. And of course it's just a little pin. So we can just pop that in there. And all I've done, of course, is just wind with a bit of craft glue. I've just wound some coloured thread around that and that will become a little spool. And you're also going to need some buttons. So a few different buttons. Um, I've actually got a nice big one for the turning wheel at the side, but I also added on top of that, that little brass one there just for some ex extra detailing. And I think that's really pretty, keeping with that vintage look. And of course, on the, on the project itself, you can put as many buttons and dials as you like. Um, I've just got, I think metal works best, something metal, little pearl ones would be nice, just to indicate some dials and so on. And we're actually going to do also for our little badge here, I thought it was a sweet idea to just add, most of these old sewing machines have a little badge there, and we just pop that one on and you can put your little, little, an, a little initial in there 
or perhaps two initials just perhaps if you're giving it for a gift it's really a really nice way to personalize it so I've just stitched an L in there and that will go on there first that one also has heat and bond behind the other thing that we'll need is to support our little end here um, so that so that all the the angles stay right we've got a little bit of um, I've got a wooden skewer here it's a little bamboo skewer and you can get them absolutely everywhere you can see that I have painted just the end of that one as silver and I think silver tends to work best gold would have worked as well um, so I've painted that ahead of time and then I have cut just that tip to about three centimeters so that's all we need from that skewer and we will be hot gluing that in so we also need our hot glue ready and I've added at the end a few little artificial flowers there just to pop around the base which is very pretty in keeping with that vintage look and I've also added a little bit of thrifted lace here that I have just to finish that off of course you could use anything any kind of braid and if you're making up in little shabbies sort of colors um, little rickrack would, would look beautiful too um, you're going to need some embroidery thread some pearl thread and of course your your extra strong sewing thread we're going to be needing clear craft glue um, a fair bit of that so make sure you've got some of that make sure it's suitable for fabric and we will need an awl and that's about it so our first step with this little project move everything out the way our first step is actually to glue our little base onto our little sponge or our piece of foam that we've cut to size just glue that one in place plenty of clear craft glue pop that one in place and we can put that aside and that can start drying for us already so there's I've got my little uh, base plate glued into place there and if you're using one of the kitchen sponges make sure that you glue it onto the little scrubby part because we need this top part this is where our pins go in here okay so we let that one dry and we move ahead to starting our actual our little machine first thing we're going to do is I remove that backing paper from that heat and bond on my little my little branding disc branding badge here I'm going to press that on with a hot iron and a protective cloth you can see where that goes so it's a little way forward so it's not quite center in this section it's a little way forward and just about a centimeter and a half down press that one into place and then we can do our stitching and if we want a little monogram letter so there you can see I've got that little one pressed into place and I've got my extra strong upholstery thread here my Gutermann thread and I'm using a gold sort of a color and I'm going to sew you could just do this on the machine but I like the little bits um, of the little handwork in this one I think it's in keeping with the whole look of the project so I've come in from behind with a knot behind and I'm sewing a tiny little blanket applique stitch so it's just the same as a blanket applique stitch only it's very small you can see they're tiny little stitches and I'm going to keep them really small because I want to leave as much room as possible on that little badge for my little letter or whatever it is that I'm going to put on there you can just put a little embellishment on there or perhaps embroider a little flower or something like that um, so I'm going to make my way around that whole outside edge if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before I'm going to put a link up the top there for you to my video that shows you how to do that and uh, and that should help you out a lot and now that my little badge is actually stitched on I can see how much room I've got for my little letter and so this time I'm just doing a little M there for one of my daughters who loves to sew so I'm just using again I'm using my black um, extra strong thread um, because I want this to be nice and fine I've come in from behind I've got a little knot at the back and I'm just going to sew over I've used a very fine black marker to actually pop that letter in and all I'm going to do is stitch over that line and I'm using just a connected back stitch just to keep that line nice and fluid 
and you can see that that's going to show up nicely and it gives that real tight little detail on this little machine that makes it all look very very vintage so you can see there I'm just going to follow that those lines and stitch in that little M and there we go we've got a little little M in there now and now our next step is to sew our little sewing machine pieces together now we want to get these really really accurate because it's such a small little shape the cleaner you you make those lines the better and in saying that with your cutting out I'm actually going to pop a link up here to a video up here that talks about cutting out your templates and that will help you a lot especially with very precise little pieces like this so I'm just going to make sure that all of my little edges are all lined up beautifully and also on your pattern template you'll see that you've got some little marks on your pattern these are particularly important because we only sew from this little mark right around the entire little sewing machine back to this mark and what we'll end up with is a little flap either side and that is how we pop our little machine on so we need that little extra there and we don't sew any further than those two lines so in keeping with it being very precise and exact I'm actually going to sew an overcasting stitch all the way around mine first as I do with all of my work it doesn't matter how many years I've been doing this um, the success to to sewing little shapes like this and and getting them nice and nice and exact is all about having that hold before you take it to the machine so I know it seems like it takes a little longer but it's definitely worth it in the end so I'm going to sew that little overcasting stitch right the way around and we we will then have it nice and secure take it to the machine little seam allowances around about three or four millimeters keep it quite small and um, remember the whole time be thinking of nice rounded edges when you're sewing and keep it all nice and fluid make sure that you really back and forth on the start and finish areas here because we're going to be opening that one out there you can see that I've stitched my little seam right the way around and then I'm going to turn this one through the easiest way is you can see that I've grabbed the end and I've got my forceps and we just need to tuck that little one through right from the end first and that will come through nicely and as I do that I'm going to push out those little corners make sure they're nicely rounded and really get that little point down the bottom and then we can pull the rest through and you can see forceps just make this job easy and also for filling I really wouldn't be without them so once you've got those all pushed out you want to go over those seams and roll them all out so everything's nice and rounded and then we're ready to fill our little machine now we're going to use some polyester filling and I've got my wool felting needle I didn't mention this earlier but this is so useful in this little project I really recommend you get some wool felting needles um, they're really going to help us pack this now this little sewing machine is packed very firm you must get sick of me saying that people who watch my videos all the time everything in soft sculpture soft sculpture is easier to deal with it's easier to sew and to add on other pieces if it is packed firm so it's something that if you can get used to doing it it'll make your job so much easier and of course it extends the life of your little projects too they're nice and firm so you can see there I've got my forceps and I'm going to support this little piece as I do it and I'm going to get all the way down 
into that lower section there. You see how I've got my hand supporting that little end. I don't want to be overly stretching because we want this little sewing machine to have this lovely little retained shape. But you can see I'm really packing it in, packing it in and packing it in. And I'm going to keep going. There's some key areas to, to watch in this little project. And they are on the curves. When we're filling out, pay special attention to this curve here. And particularly to this section here. So we need this to be all nice and firm through here so that it's holding itself up. So I'm going to keep going, pack out that top, work through here, make sure this is packed out. I'm going to pack out right down to that base. And remember that base is going to be opening out. It's going to be sitting on the machine bed like that. So we want to pack only to there and we're going to make it quite flat. And I'm going to show you how to do that with your felting needle. So you can see I've got to about here, you can see that filling in there. So while I've got to here, I've taken my felting needle and I'm really packing that in. And I'm particularly packing it in to this section here. That's just lining up all of the fibers of the polyfill. And it's going to pack it in all nice and tight. So now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to continue on and I'm going to keep using my little felting needle as I go till I get right up to that little edge here. There you can see that I've got that filling right up to the top here and those little side pieces I've just folded over because that's how it's going to sit on our machine, on our base. And so I flipped those over and I've been able to make a lovely flat surface there with my felting needle so that when I glue it on, it's got plenty of support. You can see how firm that is. There we go. So that one's not going to move. And so we can pop that one aside while we get our base ready. And so the first thing that we're going to do with our base piece, first thing I'll get you to do is draw in your lines. Just follow those lines as they come. So those are the fold lines to fold over your little sponge. Um, that just makes it a lot easier for when we're positioning that later. Flip that one over and then we have our little base plate. So our little base plate here and that is going to be fused into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. But what you need to do is make absolutely sure take your ruler and measure that you have it exactly central so that the distance is the same both sides and from top and bottom and just check your corners as well once you've got that exactly in the right position because remember we're just going to fold that over we're going to sew it on and we're going to fold it over so it needs to be right we get you to press that one on and then we're going to add our little base plate our little needle plate which is just going to, and I've just used grey felt just to indicate that kind of colouring there. Same thing there, make sure that it's centred at that front piece there. So press those into place. There I have my little base plate in place and my little needle plate on there as well. Now what I've done is I've taken that one to the machine and I've just stitched that one, just my stitch length is on number two and just stitched in grey just right close to the edge of that one. I do that one on the machine because it's neater. It's just that base plate just needs to be just nice and neat and tidy. And I'm now going to sew around the entire outside edge using uh, my blanket applique stitch again. And it gives that that lovely little rounded finish. Again, you can use that nice coordinating thread. If you like metallics, you could even use metallic with this one because um, That'll go in really well with the little black machine. I'm using that gold again, and my stitches are quite small, probably about three millimeters. So again, that same stitch, have a look at that video and uh, you can see just exactly how to do that one. So I'll make my way right the way around that little base plate. 
And now I've got my little base all stitched in ready and now we can get ready and add our little sewing machine to that piece. There's a little method in how we do this. So we've got our little sponge base ready. We're not putting it on permanently now. We're just going to use it to help us attach that little sewing machine. So we've got our little sewing machine and we need to work out where we're going to pop that one on this little base. Now it sits about a centimetre from the end. When I say that sits there, this little junction here. So what I find I do is I pop that one down there. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to put a pin in that tells me exactly where that goes. Just so I know that the base of that pin is where that goes. And I'm also going to line up each side and pop a pin in there. So again, I know where that little one's going to go. So because I'm going to glue this one down and then of course, going to stitch it in and our little uh, skewer stick is going to go through here. So getting that position is, is quite important that we get that right. And what I'm going to do is fully load up the base of this here, in here and the outside edge here with our clear craft glue ready to pop on. So you can see I've got all my glue, got my glue right to the edges there. You can see it's all still nice and very flat. And now we're just going to line that one up with our little pins and glue that one into place. Pressing down those edges and I will go around and add my pins right through. So I'm using that sponge at the moment just to help us pin this one into place while this glue dries. We will remove it to stitch this little sewing machine in place. So you can see there, it's just a matter of pushing your little edges down and pinning right the way around. And I even put a pin right through that centre there. And once you've got all of your pins in, and make sure you do that front junction as well. We really, really need to let that one dry. So that can be a good 15 to 20 minutes, unless you can pop it somewhere in the sun. And it's going to be held nicely in place with those pins. Give it a good press down so that central part is well glued. We'll leave that one just to dry. So now I've got my, my little sewing machine and the glue is all dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that off of my little sponge. And I've still got my pins in. And so now we can get to that base and we're going to sew around that base. Now, don't worry if you're using black, another good reason for using black, if you've got any little glue remnants, we'll be able to just use a felt marker straight over that and clean that all up. So what we're going to do is sew around the entire base of this one to attach it. And I find the best stitch is a stab back stitch. I've got a video that shows you how to do that one. I will put that link up here. but. It's done a little differently, obviously, because of we're doing it on, a, on something which is um, an attachment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath here. I'm starting at the back here and I really want to anchor in this little back section. So I'm going to come out right on that seam. This is probably the most challenging part of this project, but look, really, it's, it's not too bad. So it's good because we can get to the other side of it. So I've come out there, it's very hard to see on the black, but I'm just going to go in all the way through removing our pins as we go of course makes it easier. So I've pulled that one down, I'm just going to go back over that stitch again. It helps to look behind. It's very hard with the black. Maybe I'm just 
black blind but I'm, I'm not good with black fabric at all okay so I'm going to dive back in again and then I'm just going to travel just a little way I'm going to keep my stitches to around about three millimeters and right in tight close to that base watch that you're not getting caught up on your pins behind and it's really just linking that stitch right the way around as you start going around it's easier to flip it over so you can see where your next stitch will go if the black is is an issue which for me it is a little bit you can see that's all I'm going to do I'm just going to sew that that back stitch link it all up and I'm going to make my way right around the little base and back to here okay so I've got my little machine is now stitched in all around the base probably easier for you to see from behind there you see that little and it's very very secure and you can see there that it's very very flat okay so that's that one settled into place so our next step while we still have and the whole time you're working from here on in on the project be mindful of your little machine be kind to her <laughs> We don't want to be crushing her. She's very solid, but we don't want to give her any extra pressure. So just be mindful of how you're handling that. Now, at the very end here, we're going to make a little tiny hole. We're going to do that with our awl. Now, what I want you to do is just part that seam. We don't want to be breaking it or tearing it. So we're just going to ease our way in with our awl and make that little hole. And then I use a knitting needle just to increase that a little, just enough for us to be able to pop our little skewer. Now we've got that one cut to about three centimetres, three to three and a half. And we're just going to test that we can get that little one in there. You want to be able to push that one in probably about almost a centimetre. And then it's going to go in through the base as well but for now we're just going to be gluing it into there now I find for this one popping this little one in the best way is with a little drop of hot glue so just pop a little drop of hot glue on the end there right on the end and pop that one straight in there you'll find it'll push the glue up in there get it as straight as you can we're going to be able to straighten it out when we add it to here Get it as straight as you can and we'll just let that one dry for a couple of minutes and now that I have my little uh, bamboo stick my little skewer is glued into place there I've been able to mark on my little base plate my needle plate there exactly where I want that to sit in so you have to remember you want this section to be sitting nice and flat and that will pull up on that one once that's tucked in that will all sit nice and flat and just hold your little machine we're going to be adding glue underneath here but for now what we need to do is glue up the underneath panel now when I asked you to draw up that little rectangle there this is where it helps us now because we know exactly where to add our glue now the part that we're going to be gluing is only around the edge here just the very edge to hold it in place and under that base and under that little needle plate there because the rest of it we want to stay nice and free for our pins for our little pin cushion so we don't want it we don't want it all covered in glue so again I've got my clear craft glue and I'm going to focus on this little area again because we want this section to sit flat against our little sponge and no pins will be going through there anyway so plenty of glue on that spot then I'm going to run around the outside edge getting those corners
and on my needle plate there we want a large amount of glue under that little point there that's going to help hold that little needle in place and then we've got that little rectangle to be able to line that all up and as we do that and get that one on there we're actually going to press that one flat and pop our little needle we'll call it a needle and make sure all of this is nice and flat flip it over again make sure you've got it all lined up with your rectangle push that little one in as far as you like the glue underneath will hold it and now I'm going to add my pins again in the same way as I did before but we'll make sure all those little areas are held down well and also in my corners here each corner pin right way around that base make sure everything is pushed nice and flat ready to be turned under and do our side stitching so again there's a bit of drying time so again maybe about 15 minutes or so use a blow dryer if you've got one it will help speed up that process we don't want to be doing anything further until that's all nice and dry okay so now I've got everything is nicely dry but you'll notice that I've left all of my pins in and I'll leave them all in for as long as I can so our next step is just to close our corners we're going to do that with a blanket stitch I'm staying with my same gold colored thread only I'm using a pearl thread this time and I'm going to fold each corner I've come in I've got a knot at the end single thread I've come in right on that little corner just a little way in and then I'm going to close that corner being mindful to preserve our little machine and I'm going to sew a blanket stitch so a blanket stitch is just going through both layers of fabric and coming out through the loop if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'm going to put a link up there for you to have a look at a video I have that shows you how to do that and you can see I'm just going to be able to bind those two little edges together and I'm going to stitch them only as far as the base of our little sponge and I'll do that on each corner so just down to here show you on this one a bit hard to see I've put my lace on but I've stitched each corner only until that base we need the remainder fabric for wrapping under so I'm going to go ahead and do all four corners in that way so you can see there that I've stitched up each of those corners and that's nice and neatly done now so I've moved across to where I've got my hot glue gun my trusty old hot glue gun and I'm going to fold those edges under on the underneath now you can also see that I've actually trimmed back those all of those corners just so that you can tuck it in just like if you were wrapping a present taking those corners off and the first ones I'm going to do are the long edges so I'm going to take my glue run a line across the edge there and along the top it's really just to hold it in place because we're going to be adding another base on top of that and then I'm just going to 
push that one over making sure I'm really making sure that it's all nice and taut and tucked in nicely we want this all to be as smooth as possible see that one there and we'll do exactly the same with the other side pull that nice and taut and fold it over really tucking in those corners there and then we're going to do exactly the same thing on those little end pieces particularly watching those corners and the whole time I'm being aware of how I'm holding this and I'm not crushing our little sewing machine Our final one and that one's all held nicely nicely neatly wrapped like a little parcel and there we have our little base so now just to finish off that base we're going to add our little uh, final felt base and I have popped some glue all over that one and it's just a matter of lining that one up and that's just going to give our little pin cushion a really neat and professional finish so we're just going to press all of those edges down Make sure we're pressing those all down. Again, leave that one to dry. And we're going to come back and do that final stitching. And now that my glue is dry, my little base piece, I've just taken my pearl thread, a single strand, and I'm going to sew a blanket stitch right around that outside edge. And my stitches are probably about four millimeters. And that just gives it a lovely professional finish. Um, and, uh, and it leaves the whole thing nice and tidy so I'll make my way right round that whole little base and now I have finished my little stitching you see the little edge that, that gives you it's a lovely finish and you can see that I've gone ahead and sewn on one of my little buttons you can put as many little embellishments as you like on this one I just like that one little button there and I've just sewn that through the back and hidden my thread ends in my little machine and so our next step is to add our little turning wheel now what I've done is I've actually doubled up on buttons here just to give it some more body and I like the little glittery black with the with the gold there I think that looks really pretty and looks more like a wheel um, so what we're going to do is I've put a little pin here that's telling me exactly where I want that little button to sit because we're going to pull it in here I've got a double thread of extra strong upholstery thread, my Guterman thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my first button, take that one through, and then I'm going to dive in at that level and then go across. So it's got a fair bit to hold on to, remove my pin and then I come back through my little buttons there we go and I've got both my thread ends there test that your little button is in the position you want it to be 
If you want it to sit, sit a little higher, then just move it up. That's not a problem at all. But all we need to do now is just tie that off, we'll tie off those two ends to a single knot, pull it right in tight, give it a squeeze, pull it right in tight, and then I knot off about three times so it's really, really secure. As you can see there, tied off, and then I just re-thread my thread ends and take my needle back in, back into my machine and pull it out and snip those thread ends off. So I'm gonna do exactly the same with this one. And so now here's our finishing steps. We've got our little, our little wheel in place now and I've added my little spool. So my little spool is just a little push pin and they come in all sorts of colours. They do come a little bigger um, if you're lucky enough to find them just a tiny bit bigger and um, that would be useful and I know that they I have seen them in metallics and all sorts of pretty colors so whatever works with your project you may not be making this one up as a black machine maybe you're making it in shabby pinks and all those sorts of colors um, it would probably look really good in vintage red as well so you could match that to suit and all I did was put a little bit of clear craft glue on there and I wrapped my thread of my color choice to match in wrapped around that little spool and they just make the best the best little spool for the top so that one just pops in there and then I've got my lace my little bit of lace trim I've pulled that nice and taut around that base there pinned it into place and my around my base now it's only now that I've taken those pins out now that we've finished actually working on the project and where we had interfacing on the underside you can just go around if you've got black if you're working with black you can just tidy that up so that little join there is really quite invisible you don't have to put anything around the base um, you can leave it just like that because you've got this nice little clean join that's totally up to you you could put all sorts around there I'm going to add the same little flower selection around that little base and there's so many little decorations that you could get you could get I think this little project would look lovely with some little pearls a little pearl trim around the base any sort of little beads a little tiny pom-pom braid it all depends on your little project so my final detailing is I'm just going to go and hot glue those little flowers into place and I will also hot glue my little lace in place as well and so there we have our finished little pin cushion so now I've got a little pair a little mother and daughter pair my youngest daughter little Memphis Tennessee will absolutely love that one I'm sure um, and now there's a couple of things that you could do with these of course your decorations and all and all the bits that you add on there if you want to add a little thread running from your spool to the top around your little thing and down of course you could add that in I think by now you know I'm Mrs. Mrs. Neat so I like it all nice and tidy but you can certainly add um, all those little bits and pieces I hope you've enjoyed making them I'd love to see them made up in different colors they would look great in vintage red or perhaps in the shabby pinks absolutely gorgeous and I can't imagine a better gift for a sewer so thank you for joining me well thank you all for joining me today I have to say I have thoroughly enjoyed this little project I know that the design process was a little challenging but thank you so much for requesting it um, because our end result is so good and we can all enjoy it and I hope you've got someone wonderful to make this for if you have enjoyed this video you could give me a thumbs up that would be beaut who is following me on Instagram if you are you're probably getting sneaky peeks of all of the up-and-coming videos and all of my little ideas as I go along the way you see some of that design process hopefully not things flying across the room um, and you can send me pictures of your finished work finished creations that you've made from my patterns send me pictures and I will pin them up on my Pinterest board showing off your work to everyone let's make a little community where we all support each other and encourage each other that would be wonderful so make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already 
um, and you won't miss any of those great upcoming patterns. Who's liking the pin cushions? If you are enjoying the pin cushions, make sure you check out, I've got a little pin cushion playlist. So you can go there and look at all of the little pin cushions there all together. So I hope you're enjoying it all. I'm loving talking to you all. Keep talking to me in the comments. Remember to request, because you never know. It can happen. So most of all, everybody, all of those great things that come your way, make sure that you just pay them forward because we all can. Till next time, it's Huru from me.